Oh, Backyard Bend. You are beautiful, but also quirky. So, welcome to the Backyard Bend Roundabout Roundup. We've decided to go out and visit all of the art installs at our now infamous roundabouts. When we come back, we take the Roundabout Roundup Art Tour and load you up on the info behind the art. In 1937, the Thomas Sales and Service family sold their first car here in Central Oregon. And with that sale came a promise, a promise to reinvest in the people they serve and support our growing community. 81 years later, the Thomas family still keeps that promise with each Subaru sold. The Subaru Share the Love event happening now through January 2nd. We will start this tour in the Old Mill District at the roundabout that produces more traffic jams and driver frustration than just about any roundabout in town. And it is, without a doubt, featuring the weirdest piece of art out of them all. This crazy Mobius strip looking thing is the Lodestar, placed by Roger Berry in 2009 at the Reed Market Brookswood Roundabout. This mathematical piece of visual magicianery is worth a few walks around. The Northern California based artist worked with Bill Smith and the Old Mill along with Art in Public Places. Drive around it a few times, stare at it as a passenger, then switch with the driver and do it again. It is full of all sorts of twists and surprises. Do not stare at it while you are driving. It will cause you to crash. Reed Market Road hosts several installations as it passes through Farewell Park heading west. The Centennial Logger was created by old school Central Oregon artist Jerry Werner in 2004. It was designed alongside Bend's 100 year anniversary. And since Bend is a lumber town, the install makes perfect sense, right smack in the middle of the old Shevlin Hickson Lumber Yard, now Farewell Park. Jerry Werner was also responsible for the Centennial Planter. Combined with his Centennial Logger, Werner decided that the two bronze pieces honor Bent's history in the forestry industry. Get up close if you can. The awesomeness is in the details on these guys. Portland artist Lee Kelly created the Sound Garden in 2010. Lee Kelly is known to use travel, adventure, architecture, and music to inspire his creativity. The stainless steel musical notes are growing out of the natural landscape at this roundabout, blending Reed Market and Mount Bachelor Drive. One of the most famous installs is located on Century Drive and Mount Washington, on your way out of town and up to the mountains and Cascade Lakes. The Compass. Steve Jensen built these skewed direction finders in 2002. They may have been crashed into a few times, so they are neither magnetically nor true north correct, but they are close enough for a smile and some stoke. Miles Pepper spawned Red Sides in 2001. The group of Deschutes-styled salmon flow with the trade winds all year long. The Colorado Simpson Roundabout is lucky to have this install. Truly beautiful. Artist Dave Fox laid down the cogs in 2007. As multi-use industrial size planters, they lay flat on Southwest Industrial Way where bond and wall dead end into Old Mill District property. You really have to get out and walk to see these beasts and recognize their individuality. Wilson and Brookswood create the roundabout featuring Ghost, Andy Walks, and Eric Girding. Crafted in 2007 as an art in recycling project, using an old crane and bucket, it is straight up a history lesson. If you get out and take a walk around it, the artists really wanted people to interpret it on their own. Is it sinking into the past or is it rising into the future? Way down south of town, Murphy Road and 3rd Street give us Gilded River. Ken McCall, Mark Baltus, and Leslie Dixon 
planted this in 2017. Ten conceptual metal aspen trees stand 22 feet tall with hundreds of spinning and twirling leaves that provide a whimsical experience on a blustery day. The artistic team is known to have designed the piece specifically for Bend and its vibe. Troy Pillow created Evolution in 2008. His kinetic mantra was permanency, reliability, organic nature, and sustainability. If you spend some time at the feature, you will notice how it thrives with the meteorological conditions of the day. The neighborhoods around Bear Creek and 15th have welcomed the piece since day one. In 2001, Sherry Sander brought us Grizzly. The Montana-based artist is known worldwide for her animal sculptures. Grizzly is a massive bronze at the roundabout of 9th and Franklin, very close to Bend High School, home of the Lava Bears. Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. Might of the Workforce. Devin Field developed this piece in 2005, but it did need a rebuild in 2007 after it was struck by a car. It is inspired by the historic relationship between Bend and the timber industry, as well as early days free from fossil fuel tools. It is coincidentally located at Butler Market and 8th Street, close to many of Bend's industrial complexes. Next, we move west on Newport Avenue. Bueno Homage to the Buckaroo by Danae Bennett Miller. A resident of nearby Tumalo, her inspiration comes from the ranch animals and wildlife. The name comes from her husband, who was a buckaroo with a horse named Bueno. In 2002, Mel Katz brought us a tilt Sundra and the Garden Gate. The iconic Katz style installation is intentionally designed so that people will find their own stories in it. The artist invites people to take their time and be one with the piece and stand alongside it, having its meaning become specific to each individual. Hai Ying Wu brought us migration in 2004. The birds taking flight in migration symbolize the journey of COCC college students. The artist, who is a native of China, left China following the Tiananmen Square demonstrations. Amazing as it may sound, he actually had the piece forged in China. That group of birds made a long trip to get here. Earth Song by Bruce West, 2005. Light and reflection play a large role in West's art. With a long history at Lewis and Clark College, Bruce is an avid whitewater boater and references the natural landscape in his works. He recommends that everyone view his sculpture in the mid-afternoon light. Here is another one from Devon Field. The Milky Way arrived in 2013. He creates from direct hard metal. The stainless steel sculpture is accompanied by a solar panel. The solar panel energy collected during the day allows the feature to change color all through the dark of our nights. We move on to Northwest Crossing neighborhood. The Sunrise Spirit Column by David Govader, 2001. The piece is a combination of basalt, granite, steel, and copper. It is a sort of totem, but with contemporary pictographs, including deer, a skier, and a television. It's worth a closer look if you have time to stop. Orb One by Brandon Zebold, 2005. The six-foot sphere at the intersection of Skyliners Road and Mount Washington is a trip. There is no orb, too, so keep your hopes under control. The orb was created by a torch on steel and is site-specific. So, in other words, it's designed to provide insight to a location's work and play environments. High Desert Spiral by John Fleming, 2013. The High Desert Spiral towers 39 feet, the tallest public art sculpture in Bend. The Archimedean Spiral, which features 60 steel blades, will move with the wind. As you drive around it, the internal orange and yellow colors will provide a lava-like experience to showcase Bend's organic volcanic past. At 14th and Simpson stands Big Ears by Joe Halco, 2001. Artfully cast in bronze, this pack of deer can actually confuse visitors to town, thinking they are, in fact, real deer. It is sort of like a visual speed bump, really slows people down. 
Last but not least, the most controversial art installation at our roundabouts, The Phoenix Rising by Frank Boyden, 2002. The mini version is on Phil's trail, and this piece has generated more opinions than any other, so it seems. Regardless, it is an icon of bent. There are a bunch of roundabouts still out there that don't really have any art installs on them quite yet. The future is coming, so who knows what it's going to bring. 